This meeting is now called to order. Roll call. Commissioner Lolo. Present. Commissioner Walton. Here. Commissioner Daniels. Commissioner Moulton. Commissioner White. Here. Commissioner Gaines. Here. Vice Chair Nielsen. Here. Chair Maxwell. Present. For the record, we have a quorum. Very good. Okay. Uh, the next item, business item, is approval of minutes for our February 26th. Uh, Chair, point of order, you need to start oh. with public comment. I'm sorry. Oh, correct. My apologies. Okay, this is uh, public comment time. Members of the public wishing to address this commission on matters within the jurisdiction of the city of Seaside, but not on this agenda, may do so during this time for up to three minutes. Members of the public in the chamber, please approach the podium if you're wishing to make public comment. Nobody's coming forward, so we'll say public comment is now closed. Okay, now it's time for approval of the minutes of our last. We can do one meeting at a time or two, uh, if you prefer. I move, I move that we approve the minutes from... What are we approving now? February 26th and March 18th. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes from our previous two meetings. Uh, Chair, for the record. We didn't have a meeting last month. Which was March. Right. But it does say on here. Oh, the beginning minutes, okay. Right. Yeah. All right, Chair, you can do a all in favor vote. Okay, all in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay, review of the agenda. If there's any items that arose after the 72 hour posting deadline, this is the point in the meeting where a vote may be taken to add the item to the agenda. A two thirds majority vote is required. Does anyone have anything to add? Okay, seeing none, moving on. Business item 5A receive an update from FOSPA. Hello. I'm Jeannie Reese, and um, I'm here to talk about some of the things that FOSPA has been doing since the last time I reported to you. So that's been since November. And I think we have a presentation so you get to see pictures. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so I just thought I would remind everybody of the goal of FOSPA to create community unity and civic pride and um, through volunteering. And some of our goals have to do with um, the maintenance of the parks and pursuing sources of funding, creating habitat space and improving neighborhoods. And um, there is a list of the parks that we are now representing. And going on to like, what, what are we doing now in parks? So um, mostly we are weeding. That's like kind of the big thing right now. And um, putting in mulch, 
um, the planting is kind of over at this particular point. And so that is the big activity. And there's so many weeds because of all the rains. It's just his, um, everything is flourishing. The native plants are flourishing, but the weeds are, are um, flourishing as well. So we're doing a lot of mulching and um, mulch uh, suppresses weeds. And um, so when we have a, like a, an area that is like um, a really large area, we do sheet mulching where we put, you know, cardboard and uh, water and just put lots and lots and lots of mulch on top. And that really has helped a lot. And so that's what we're gonna continue to do. And um, another really big thing right now, especially over the last, I'd say, two, three months, has been uh, water control. Um, we've tried to create berms and swales so that the water doesn't go into the sewer system, that it stays with the plants. And so that's kind of a big thing to, you know, kind of herd the, the um, earth and the mulch so that it is... Um, the most beneficial to the plants. Um, one of the things that's been really nice is that we have had a lot of student volunteers. And um, those, the three that are on the screen were from the uh, international school. And uh, they were really, really great helpers. And we continue to have volunteers too from different schools, sometimes from um, colleges and a lot of times from eighth, ninth grade. So, and um, going on to park improvement projects, uh, you probably saw if you've been to Beta Park, there is a new top level. So yeah, the next, yeah, exactly. So on the left-hand side, you can see where the um, cement was kind of cracked and it was two different kinds of cement there. So the city put in not only a picnic table, but smoothed it all out so that it took away um, those areas that were tripping hazards. So it looks, it looks really awesome right now. Uh, uh, something that's happening at, the, at Capra, if you haven't been there recently, is that Beth Rocha is take, has taken over a part of this for an incredible veggie garden. And it's really, really uh, magnificent right now. It's just so, so gorgeous. So I hope you get a chance to see that. One of the things that we're hoping to do at Capra, um, or one of the things that FOSPA has um, asked the city to do is to, on the upper level, take out the dirty sand. The sand is like kind of filled with weeds most of the time. And um, like right behind the person in um, red, Mike, right there, uh, right behind them is, is a great big swing set. But that particular area kind of gets a lot of weeds in it. So it kind of is it can, uh, abandoned. It doesn't look very inviting. So um, we've asked the city to replace it with um, ADA. I don't know exactly what you call it. It's like chips, wood chips that are safe. And um, also to paint the old swing. So it looks more inviting. And I think kids will be more apt to want to play there. That's the upper level of Capra. And then I think a lot of you saw the um, um, the ribbon cutting for Fernando Park. So um, that saw just like an amazing transformation. And uh, I think that the um, neighborhood, uh, the neighbors are really proud and happy of the transformation there. So we were really happy that we were able to kind of get the ball rolling on that particular project. And then the city kind of ran with it. And I know that they uh, made a lot of beautiful additions there. Um, the next park is Havana Solis. And um, they have um, asked, you know, what would we like to see at Havana Solis? And what we chose, and I think that the city had wanted to do this uh, from the very beginning, is to take the area underneath the um, eucalyptus trees and to have a beautiful picnic area with new, um, um, new picnic tables uh, and um, barbecues. And they're going to take out a couple of the smaller 
round stone flower beds that are kind of taking up a huge amount of space. So they're going to take away those and leave the two big ones there. And that's going to leave like three really, really nice areas with two picnic tables each. That'll be incredible for families. And it'll be really nice too, like when we have gatherings to be able to host people there, you know, because it'll, it'll be really inviting. It's, it's, it's a nice place to be. And the Havana Solis Community Garden is doing really, really well too, if you haven't been there recently. And uh, it's gonna look even spiffier with uh, additions from Blue Zones because they are gonna put in signage, um, uh, you know, welcoming people, uh, talking a little bit about, you know, how to harvest things. Um, I've got like little, um, little signs that say, you know, when to pick, when to harvest, and that show where, uh, you know, what, uh, vegetables are in the garden. So it's gotten um, um, a lot of attention to try to bring in more people and for them to enjoy the, the veggies that are there. And um, there's been a lot of good community interest. So I'm excited to see what's happening. And um, what's not on the PowerPoint that is going to be happening tomorrow is um, there's a, a workforce called Cadre and it's um, young people who are getting work skills, they're going to be there all day tomorrow. And so they are going to take the weeds that have been mowed down and uh, kind of, you know, the city came along really wonderfully and uh, did weed whacking. And now we're going to try to gather those up and try to get a little bit more to the root so that the weed whacking um, remains. <laughs> Uh, kind of get gathered up and the seeds don't spread and the cycle of weeds doesn't continue quite so much. So we're going to go there and do some sheep mulching and um, try to make that area even more awesome. So um, another thing that the Blues, Blue Zones has done for us is they have, um, they had a, a, a shed built and um, on site. And so we have a place to store tools, which is really wonderful. And um, that was done in December. And we're hoping to have a um, mural put on and have um, the pollinator plants and vegetables be the, the theme, obviously. Trying to uh, complement the kind of bucolic, you know, laid back vibe of, of the park. So we're excited about that. And on the next slide, it shows like what we hope to see for the entrance sign uh, as you go into the garden, something that's kind of rustic, but also has um, um, some parts of it that are descriptive. Uh, it's going to be in English and Spanish. And Blue Zones is also going to do a similar signage project at Capra Park, too. So that's a really awesome thing. And I think that a lot of you saw at Highland Otis, the new uh, playground area that was at the bottom. There was the ribbon cutting for that just a couple of weeks ago. Also at Highland Otis, um, uh, FOSPA has recommended to the city that we have a uh, curbing um, around the edge of the volleyball court and that new sand be put in and um, that that gets kind of cleaned up uh, so that it looks more inviting. So that's what we're hoping to do. That's one of the recommendations FOSFA made with city funds. Um, in Lincoln Cunningham, we're really excited about the trails going in this summer. And so we're looking forward to that in uh, later this summer, like July, August. And um, we took on Martin Park last year and uh, Martin Park really is a pretty spiffy little park. It's got a nice um, green area and then it's got like pockets of uh, plants that are surrounded by fences. So uh, the city put in water in one of those areas and then we uh, put new native plants there. So we're just trying to help them be a little bit more water conscious and um, have less dependence on uh, water once those native plants have gone to maturity. So that's kind of our, our hope there. Uh, at Mescal Neal, uh, we were able to get a grant through the Monterey Bay um, Employee Action Fund 
So if you've been to Mescal Neal, you know, it's, you know, it's up on a, it has a really beautiful, beautiful view. It's up on a hill and um, there's no water on that hill. So the only way that water has gotten to them is through water trucks. So we're going to put one of those underground water um, tanks so that they can water the natives, uh, the California natives for the three years that they will need watering. And then the beauty about the California natives is that they need the water just for the three years. And then after the three years, they they really self-sustain. Um, if it's like a really, really dry, dry, dry year, they might need to have a little bit of boost, but otherwise the California natives will take care of themselves with the uh, bun hopefully abundance of water that it's had. Like for example, at Havana Solis when we were there a couple of weeks ago, we didn't have to water the California natives because of all the water that they've gotten. And hopefully um, those plants are mature enough that they won't need a huge amount of water. I think that they're two or three years old. So um, that's the whole idea. Um, these are kind of the events that have been happening. Um, Lincoln Cunningham, uh, hosted Blue Zones volunteers. So in addition to FOSPA volunteers, we also had Blue Zones come in. And um, that's really awesome because that like means that between 10 and 20, sometimes even 30 other volunteers come and they can be a really powerful work workforce for other, for, for big projects. So that's, that's cool. Um, the th they are going to come to, in 2024, they're going to come to Havana Solis, Lincoln Cunningham, and then again to Havana Solis in November. Sometimes Blue Zones has a particular theme, and sometimes they are just there to help. So we always welcome them. Uh, other events, this has uh, happened in the past. This happened in December. We had a... Um, an expert uh, um, tree, thank you, an arborist come um, and he showed us a correct way of um, trimming trees. And that was a, a wonderful community event. People that we haven't seen uh, were there and that was, that was awesome. So um, we hope to, you know, hope that we can continue that kind of education. And um, unfortunately, on April 5th, um, uh, FOSPA and Sustainable Seaside were not represented at that night market. Because if you remember, it was like really cold and blustery, and they just didn't think that it was a really healthy thing to do that night. So they um, bowed out of that commitment, but hopefully we'll be able to do that again. And then um, a couple... Well, just actually um, this next week, uh, there is going to be a small uh, Earth Day celebration at Beta Park. That's our regularly scheduled work day. Um, and there's going to be uh, very small things. I think that we're going to give away some of those um, uh, like countertop compostable things where you put, you know, your, you know, your food waste and um there will be, if people would like to, they can take tours of the park. You know, if they hadn't been there before, they can help uh, as a work day. So it's it's going to be, um, and I think that we're going to be giving away some native plants to that day. So it's going to be small, but we just wanted to complement the um, bigger Earth Day that's going to be on the 21st on Sunday. So um, I think that you know the kinds of uh, collaboration we try to engender. Um, we've worked with the Neighborhood um, Improvement Commission, and, you know, um, I'm glad to see that we can communicate with uh, what our two organizations are doing. And um, our community partners like Blue Zones are really vital to us. And um, the Resource Conservation District, the Resource Conservation District has been so great to us. They have, like, um, donated things like compost. <laughs> Ooh, uh, and they are the ones that have coordinated the work day, the special work day tomorrow. So they have been very generous to us. And then just in conclusion, you know, we're always around one of the parks. 
uh, from 10 to 2 on Saturdays, even though sometimes it might be kind of raining and cold, we're, we're always out. So um, we always invite you if you'd like to come to uh, join us or, you know, even if you want to just come and say hello and see what we do, it's kind of a fun and exciting time because there's a lot of really positive energy. So thank you so much. Do you have any questions? Thank, thank you for your wonderful presentation and for all of the excellent work that you and your organization does. Um, You're welcome. Thank you. Open it up to the commissioners, Vice Chair Nielsen. That was excellent presentation. Thank you yes, very sir. much. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, a really good presentation, very complete. And I'm Thank impressed you. with the um, the plants, water resistant plants that you have in the yeah. majority of the park. Yeah, that's that's huge. Yes, that's good. Yes, it's really huge, especially in parks like Havana Solis and Lincoln Cunningham, because except for the underground tank at Lincoln Cunningham, you know, we the only water that we have at Havana Solis are two. Uh, plastic water tanks that are there do you know so um it's really vital that yeah, you know we put that is. in that's that's a good thing yeah thank you for your presentation yeah and uh i wanted to uh talk about fernando park for a minute yes. i remember when sarah who used to be with FOSPA. Yes. Uh, she's the one who initiated that yes and look what happened with all of FOSPA's good work and in conjunction with the city. It's just an amazing transformation. And it is. He tells you how important parks are and spaces to, whether there's anything there or not, that, that are pleasant to be in outside your own home in the neighborhood. Yes, it looks lovely. And yeah, thank you very much. I'm You're wondering welcome. where all that sand is that we're supposed to be getting in a couple of places, but we can talk about that later. The sand. Right. We don't want hurdy dirty. We want sand. <laughs> Anyhow, thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner Lobo. Yeah, I yes, have a couple sorry. of questions. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, with regards, thank you um, for the presentation. Um, when we talk about sheet mulching, mulching um, throughout the parks, is that something that originated in Havana and then we noticed that it was uh, working out really well there and then we started implementing it on other parks or is that just across the board um, staple what FOFSA does is begin with the sheet uh, and then the mulch abo above it so that it retains water to the native plants but are we doing this with other non-natives or is just, it's just a method that we've discussed? Uh, you know, uh, Havana Solis is the, maybe the first one that I remember in a large space, but I know that it's been done before. It's not new. And especially um, it's, it's nice to have a bigger space because you're talking about taking old cardboard and like spreading it out. <laughs> So if it's like uh, in a small little area, it's a little bit more cumbersome. But at Havana Solis, we had the area around the trees that was really big. And you probably remember it was like filled, filled, filled with weeds. And we were able to really, really curb the weeds by doing that. And then um, we've done it in a lot of other parks since. Um, like, for example, at Lincoln Cunningham, there were like really thick, heavy weeds along the fence area. And so we laid down a strip of um, cardboard around that and um, the weeds have really been much better. And we started to bring that down at Lincoln Cunningham where we had bigger spaces. It's kind of a matter of like, um, if the plants are close together, it probably is a little bit labor intensive to do that. So it kind of depends from park to park, but okay. yeah. Um in that shed at Havana Park, is that shed locked and who's responsible yeah. for the lock? Does city staff have access to it? Uh, they do. Um, uh, I was, uh, I have access to it and the people who need to have a lock, there's like two locks on it. So um, yeah, um, like Christine who works with the parks uh, with FOSPA, she has access to it 
Um, the people who need the tools that are in there have the combination. Okay. Um, the signage that uh, we're thinking about putting in Havana Park, I think you mentioned that it's going to be um, bilingual. Yes. Um, are we thinking about doing that across the board for all FAFSA parks when we talk about signage? I know that Capra, um, I think it was Capra that has that new vegetable garden. Uh -huh. um, will that also sustain signage like we're thinking of putting into Havana? Um, as far as I know, yes. I, I would think that it would be just as important there. Can you tell me a little bit more about your youth program on how community can access this? How many students utilize the service learning hours through FAFSA? Um, I know at the international school, a representative from FOSPA makes a presentation and they have um, the ability to choose. Students have the, the ability to choose. I do not know what other schools have a presentation given to them, but I think the word has gotten around. We had a mom and uh, two of her children come a couple of weeks ago. So I think the word has gotten around. Um, uh, as far as formally, I don't know other schools that have come. And um, CSUMB sends people too. Um, yeah, okay. um, that's what I know. Uh, for the water tank, when do you anticipate that going into Mescal and Neil? You know, um, at our last meeting, um, we didn't have an answer. So I'm hoping that this month we will. I think the last thing that we heard was that they're gathering the parts for it because it's not just the water tank, it's um, the um, solar powered battery and it's the pump and so a lot of little parts need to come together so that it is useful. Um, has there been other parts identified as needing um, water? Um, and do does FASA have a list of that? And yeah, um, we are hoping to put another underground tank at Lincoln Cunningham. You know, Lincoln Cunningham is like the size of four parks, five parks, and so. It's gotten a little complicated because now you have the pathways coming through and the bridge. And so ultimately we would love another another underground tank on the other side of the park, actually kind of close, closest, uh, close to the bridge. But we've kind of put that on hold because of all the construction that we anticipate. And um, we, we would like also an underground tank at Havana Solis as well. And I know that the parts have been ordered, but again, we're kind of waiting just a little bit on that and to see if um, where that might be most beneficial. Uh, may I step in for a second, um, Commissioner Lobo and Jeannie? Actually, these are questions you should be asking Public Works, not FOSPA. No, uh, but we brought let, let me Those let me clarify public. myself. The questions that are asking are the recommendations that we're getting for FOSPA, not whether they are having to do this work or not. So the questions are just directly of the recommendation FOSPA has for this commission, so that we can take that into consideration and then take it back to Public Works. But there are details here that only Public Works knows. And so I'm just asking just for the recommendation of what 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 do you see with need Representative mm -hmm. FOSTA of what tanks will make you see that we need. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure that they've recommended this to Public Works, but I'd like that because we are discussing our work plan this, uh, this meeting. So it'd be nice to recommend that so that we can see that through um, and not have to put pauses because of construction coming down the pipeline. Maybe there's three other ones that don't have construction and we can focus on those. Uh, my next question is with regards to um, the swing set. I know that you mentioned that you were thinking about, or Boss is thinking about painting. Is there a reason why it wouldn't be replaced because of the age? I know that area only has that swing set and the basketball court just um, received a fence around it. 
So maybe like a larger one or maybe something that can coincide with a swing set. Was that a consideration FAFSA had or? I think, um, I think that there's a lot of considerations right there, but you know, uh, Capra has a big master plan and um, there were lots of parts to the master plan. And um, the city said, okay, FOSPA, here is, um, here's a certain amount of money. And what would you like to see have happen this fiscal year? And so we said, we'd like this, 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 and, oh, let's see, there's probably about five to $10,000 approximately. There's probably room for a smaller project. So if I remember right, we said, what about sprucing that area up? So um, that's how we were going towards it. And also, I think part of our thinking was tempered by the fact that when we got into Fernando Park, or when the city got into Fernando Park, you know, we had gotten the original $25,000 and we were so excited. Hey, you know, look at, we're gonna put playground equipment here. And then um, the city said, oh, but you know, it's gonna take $50,000 to put it in. And it's gonna take $100,000. And the, the money just escalated, escalated, escalated. So for the amount that the city had allotted for us, it seemed logical and wise to try to spruce that area up, make it more welcoming, and to not get into the uh, logistics of putting new equipment in that would need to have all of the, um, uh, I want to say permits and all of the ADA compliant things. So I think that that was the logic of that, because I know what you're talking about. Okay, thank you. Um, water conservation um, across all the parks, is there a recommendation that FOSA has um, as far as mm -hmm. water conservation and obviously going with um, water resistant native plant, but is there a broader spectrum that FOSA has looked at as, as far as our parks here locally on what we can do? Like all of the parks? Or the parks that FOSTA. Okay, okay. Um, obvious, well, I think a really good thing to look at would be Martin Park. Okay, Martin Park is a new is new to us. And um, there's a huge swath that is all grass. That's taking water. And so what we would like to do as we um, consider next steps at Martin Park is we would like to take more and more little bits of that and to take out the water guzzling grass in some areas, not the whole area. I mean, how wonderful to have green grass, that's great. But um, to take out smaller chunks so that we put in the uh, California natives that aren't gonna need a whole, whole lot of grass, a uh, whole lot of water down the road. So I think the thinking is where can we put California natives that will complement what's already there so as to use a lot less water in the future? Great, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any other commissioners have any questions? Thank you very much Reese, for your presentation. Um, open it up for public comment. Those in the chamber wishing to make public comment, please approach the podium. Okay, seeing none, public comment is closed. Okay, the next item is continued discussion on ways to improve communication with regard to the promotion of city-sponsored programs and events. And I put that on the agenda. But since then, uh, some things have changed dramatically. <clears throat> um, I will say that I did uh, knock on some doors and speak with some people about uh, this commission uh, being included in, in discussing scheduling of ribbon cutting events and uh, it was welcomed. So anyway. Does anybody have any further comments or questions on that? 
I like the fact that you have made that decision to uh, ask about us being included in decision cutting events. We had a ribbon cutting at uh, Sabado Park on Saturday, which is two doors down from my house. And I wasn't able to make it because of uh, my commander's duties in my um, Prince Hall Masonic Shriners Court. So, um, but my better half was there and he took pictures and everything, but, and then it was raining and I thought it should have been canceled because of the rain, because I'm sure not so many people were able to come out or didn't want to come out in the rain and have a hot dog and see the ribbon cutting. So I was a little disappointed that it wasn't canceled. And so that's what I have to say about that. Thank you. Anyone else? Commissioner Lobo? Uh, can you sh are you able to share some solutions that the people that you spoke to may have come? Or maybe just like an update on when we can... I know that we started to get some of the emails with regards to ribbon cutting, but does um, Public Works uh, schedule those out? Or is that us, like Parks and Recs, that schedule ribbon cuttings uh, for parks? So most of those start with public works, but then they go through a process of reaching out to the elected officials to see when they're available. So a lot of that is contingent on when the mayor or the mayor pro tem are available and then they work around their schedule to make it happen. Um, and then we are notified after their availability for those events. Thank you. Commissioner Nielsen. Thank you. Uh, one thing I wanted to know if it would be possible is to send an email out when there's an opportunity for uh, commissioners to volunteer somewhere like at Oldemeyer, uh, at some of the, the third Thursday events, you know, for your special monthly events. Is it possible to send out an email like the first of that week asking people or do you need people to volunteer there for that? Or some other things that we might wanna, that would be nice to be reminded of so that we don't have to, you know, I've missed a couple of them because I forget about them and I don't pre-schedule them a lot of times. I do when I'm reminded of them, but other than that, it's kind of hit and miss for me. but. It just would be nice to get that, hey, we're having our St. Patrick's Day, and if anybody wants to come down and volunteer, I mean, is that practical? I mean, it is practical, yeah. Um, we just need to be better at sending emails. Yeah. Okay, Terry. <laughs> there, there, is a, there is a list of all of those events in the activity guide also. There is, but it would... It would be nice to be reminded just because we are the True. commission and it would be nice to see more of us down there. We will do better at reminding the commission. It's three days away. <laughs> but I also I also know that we do get a monthly uh, like a newsletter kind of thing that has all of the events listed in it for each different month. Okay. It doesn't specifically say that, but. I'll be more than happy to send out. Okay. Just saying. All the bands that I will send out an email. Anything else on the agenda? <laughs> Jeanette says she wants more emails, Terry. Okay. The Commissioner Walton thinks that each commissioner should be self-governing. And if we get that information, we don't need to add to staff to ask 
us to be reminded. Here, here. Thank you, Commissioner Lowell. I just for clarification, I think the email was for volunteer services at all of these. So if Parks and Rex needs volunteers, um, they would send that email out to say, hey, this is the event that we're having. We need volunteers. I don't think it was. Pretty I don't much. know. I wouldn't know that. So. The commission is more than welcome to volunteer at any park recreation event that we host. We can put you to work. By all means, it could be, it's just by putting your table up, right? Because I think that is an even a, a way that you're volunteering your time by having your table at our events. So, you know, you don't need to do the work of the event, but you're doing the work of sharing your mission. Okay. Public comment is now open. <laughs> I don't think anyone's in here, Jerry. Okay. Seeing no one, public comment is, I still have to announce it though. They're, okay. Okay. Uh, business item C, discussion on the Earth Day celebration plan. I also put that on the thing. Um, our, our, our uh, what do you call it? itinerary is already laid out by committee chair Nielsen. Although we need to have direction on uh, the location of the tree planting and also if it's going to be in the city lawn area, that area is going to have to be cut out by city staff ahead of time. So that was my question. If we have a location and can the lawn area where it's going to go, if it's going to go in the lawn area, can be cut out ahead of time. Good evening. Um, my name is Leslie Landhero. I'm with the Public Works Department in the Engineering Division. Um, so what I'm understanding is that on Earth Day, you're going to have tree planting at City Hall in a specific location. Well, go ahead, Commissioner. Sorry to interrupt, but I have communicated with Monty and um, I discussed planting, doing, we're having a, another, last year we had a tree planting demo and we planted a little uh, tree next to Dr. Roberts. Right here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I said it would be nice just to put another tree either on the other side or nearby that one. So, you know, they're kind of in the, they're sort of clustered together rather than spaced all over. And he said, yes. Um, and I asked, asked him if he wanted me to pick up the tree and he said, yes. So I don't know if they need, maybe they should, yeah, they could dig a hole for us, but it would be nice to let them know where we want the hole, where we want the hole dug. If they bring a shovel, we can actually dig the hole during the demo. And I can clarify the tools with Monty if you want, or you can let me know if there's anything different than what I'm saying. Okay, so just, um... You were talking about um, one tree planted right next small, to one a small, gallon. okay, one gallon. Um, Commissioner Nielsen, you could also go out and stake, or like where you, if you're not going to dig the hole and just so preemptive put a stake in there, so that way Monty can go out there and when the guys have a, you know, you can just say, hey, we already put it there, just dig the hole here. Okay, that's scheduled first, um, the twenty first. Correct. But is that location up to us or would it be a decision by the engineering department or public works? I believe the commission, or we picked this location last year. So I don't see why not, as long as there's no- um, Irrigation. Ir yeah, irrigation lines there, but Monty would be the one that would know that. Yeah, he's the one I communicated about that, Very putting good. it there. Very good. 
Okay. That's the 21st. Okay, anything else on this? Item? We also, there's a flag in the Public Works Department, Arbor flag, Arbor Day flag, that uh, Dave Fortune mentioned that we already have one. So we need to have that for the flag raising okay. on that same day. Correct. Do we have that? Correct. I do. You guys have it? The mayor and the council approved it already. Correct? Sorry. Yeah. Yes. We have like a ceremony. Okay. okay. Flag raising. No, we just had and we just had it approved at the last council meeting. So we just need to figure out where the flag is. I think it's either in my office or public works has it. Okay. Simple. Hopefully. Okay. Anything else? Commissioner Lobo. Once we find the flag, who is going to be raising it that day? Well, well staff will do it with public works. So public works will set it up and then um There'll be a ceremony to lower it so it can be hung and then to raise it at that time. Okay. Sorry. The mayor is going to read the proclamation and I asked him if he would raise the flag or have somebody else raise it. So that should be. And we can even be someone on the commission. <laughs> Want to do it? You want to read hey, that? that's fine. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> oh, get to that. Oh. Calm down, calm down. Okay, yeah, we're also going to be giving out vouchers for the trees uh, giveaway thing. Is, is there any more discussion on this? I got a couple things. Okay. I just want to remind the commission, um, Commissioner Walton, Commissioner Nielsen, I have your supplies for your activity. So someone will need to pick them up from my office. I can have them ready for you. Commissioner Lobo will take care of that. Commissioner Lobo is okay. going to be responsible for that event. And then we also need to make sure that the someone picks up the tablecloth and the stuff for the Parks and Rec Commission table. We have new swag and all that stuff that the commission can give out as well. Um, so I think that that'd be good. And we even got these little tree things that um, are seed pockets. So you can plant them, you can use them as an ornament and then you could plant them in the ground and it'll, uh, for wildflowers. So it's a cool little thing. So it fits in with Earth Day. I'm gonna... yeah. Okay, thank you. Is that it? Okay, public comment is now open. Public comment is closed. Okay. Okay, this next item is kind of a redundant with B, but that's okay. Identify ways to have the commission be more involved in the planning for park ribbon cutting events in the future. And I think we've already gone over this. So uh okay well, chair if i may um would it be helpful that i don't know um miss lantero if when when we are deciding these things if we can maybe the chair sits in on a meeting or something where we can bring them in just to, in advance so they are aware of like when the ribbon cuttings are or even more of a like a heads up like hey we are looking i know we've done three over like, I mean, we'll have a, a third one, I think in three weeks this weekend, right? Yeah. I don't, you know, we'll probably be a little bit farther out for our next ones, but like once moving forward, like maybe a month in advance notice, like, hey, commission, you know, we're looking at doing these ribbon cuttings. Is there anything specific that you want to 
do at this ribbon cutting, right? Do you want to have an activity for the people that show up? Do you want to do this? Do you do that? So that way it's more of the commission having a piece of something to do with that um, ribbon cutting. So there's maybe a little bit more interaction where I think it's nice that we're out there talking or public works cooking, you know, hot dogs or whatever it is, but just to give the commission more of a, a say of something else that it's happening with the park, right? So I just want to make sure that, you know, you're all involved. Commissioner Lobo. Um, I know we talked about it and how it, it, it conflicts with schedules. Um, when this got brought up, I wanted to add it to the work plan, but perhaps we can do it here. Just a suggestion that since we are going to have ribbon cuttings that we require one of us to be at least at one of them. I know Bobby's there. I've been to a couple, but just so that we can show face to these, uh, which would be great if we had some advance notice so we can work around our schedule and perhaps we can talk about, hey, is someone going to be able to go to that? Um, or maybe we get another email asking like, who's going to be, who's going to be coming to this uh, ribbon cutting? Um, so I don't know if that's if we want to add that to the work plan or maybe just have it as a standalone discussion like we are now kind of saying like, okay, moving forward, at least one of us should be at these ribbon cuttings. You can add it to the work plan. Go ahead. Is, is that an issue? I know Diane and I were there Saturday, the prior one, the four of us were there. Fernando, we were all there. Is it an issue? Uh, well, I'll, being there? excuse me, I, yeah. I, I'll tell you why I spoke up was because the there was a, a ribbon cutting thing at one of the parks it was on a Wednesday. So whatever when it was, um, I felt that um, there was a lot of people that couldn't attend because they were at work. So I voiced that concern. Uh, for one thing, and also that maybe we would like to be included in the deciding, you know, the scheduling of it also, you know, I instead of just finding out on an email, you know, so that's why I spoke up. Uh, go ahead. I believe the issue of weekdays has been resolved at city council meeting, which is why the last two or three have been on Saturday. And I know the issue of having, we talked about it on Saturday with so few people there and having to pay staff. It's not just the city council and the mayor, but the public works people are getting paid overtime. So Saturday is an issue, but I believe that's been resolved moving forward. And I'll just say, I don't think it's an issue of the commission attending because everyone I've been to, there's been more than half the commission. But I, for, to what uh, Commissioner Lobo was saying, I think it just makes sense that we're all aware of when they are in, in advance. So if you have a job or you have other commitments, you can maybe potentially plan around it. If you know, hey, on, on a, if you get it a month in advance, you have a little bit more wiggle room than getting it in a week in advance. True. Commissioner Nielsen. You're just getting it from both sides. Yeah. That's okay. I just want to point out that every time there's a ribbon cutting, every city council member is there. So, well, I'm saying it wouldn't be that, you know, it would, and we are the Parks and Recreation Department. So the more of us that are there, the more, yeah, they're involved. It is, you know, there is a lot to showing up. I feel. We're the Parks and Rec Commission. Yes. He's the department. The Recreation <laughs> Department. <laughs> Anyone else? Well, I also was advocating for the people with FOSPA because they do the majority of their work on Saturdays. So, and they need to be appreciated and applauded for all their efforts. So that was really the major point of my whole thing. Okay, anyone else? Public comment? Seeing none? Okay. Oh, excuse me. This Go goes ahead. back to Commissioner um, Nielsen's request, but um, maybe 
you have meetings monthly, we can have an event calendar that's posted in here so you know what's coming up um, for volunteer efforts as well. Um, I don't know how hard that is to do, Dan, um, but just put it in the back end of like the events to come for the following month. <laughs> and then if you know, and if we know in advance, sometimes we don't know in advance when those uh, ribbon cuttings are happening. Um, just to let you know, there is one for Catino Park this Saturday at 930. So it will be... <laughs> I'll be announced tomorrow and on the website. So just to let you know. Thank you. That's a major uh, ribbon cutting event. Okay, moving on to item E, which is make final recommendations and approve the 2024-2025 work plan to submit to the city council, which I have already gone in front of the city council and apologized to them for my lack of uh, having it ready on time. Because our deadline is really, it's April 1st every year. So we'll start by looking at this thing and we'll go item by item, I suppose. So we can bypass the first couple pages, just a history and statement thing. Okay. So at the top of the page, it says fiscal year, that needs to be changed to 24, 25 work plan, correct? This was right here, this is our, this was our work plan for this current year. So we're reviewing that one first and seeing where we were what we've done oh. and then and then anything that we want to roll over we can roll it over to the next one and then if there's any additions at the end we'll add additions to um next year's work plan okay thank you for your guidance okay goal and objective one <clears throat> Proposed activities to review, consider, and endorse recommended budget for fiscal year 23-24. Priority ranking high, timeline for completion, April 2024. Any changes? No. We'll say for this one, we are a little behind on our budget, and we are just doing the mid-year budget at our meeting on Thursday, and we haven't really even started on next year's budget. So, um, I mean, this isn't completed, but to get anything in front of the commission, we might be able to have a draft of something maybe in the May meeting, potentially. Okay. Commissioner Lobo. So we're creating this with the idea of last year's budget. Uh, and then once, you all have your meeting on Thursday, then we'll know how, what that stands or? Well, the meeting on Thursday is like the mid-year. So we're going over what is, if there's any changes to our current budget now. Okay, so what, we're, what, what we need to do is we'll look if there's anything for 24, 25. Right, so if. Just, so I, think we, I think we numbered this wrong. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 We have no, yeah, there, there's, oh, well, I guess that would have been done because we would have recommended for this fiscal year. So now we need to do it for next fiscal year. Right. I'm under the impression this was the recommendations that we had last year going yes. into this year. And then we're, and we're working now for next year. And if we want to take some from this work plan to carry over to next year, we'll understand better after Thursday's meeting, whether we, if our recommendations will meet the budgetary. No, no, no. no. Okay. Thursday's meeting is just for us because normally we do the mid-year budget for the city in late February, early March. So we're, we're behind on that aspect. So, which means that it pushed our preparation for next year's budget behind too. Right. So what we're going to do is we start preparing for next year's budget. That's where we, any of the recommendations from the commission 
we want to add it to that budget. So hopefully we can, when we have 24, 25, we can add those ones from this work plan. Anything that comes in here, we'll try and incorporate those into next year's budget. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, we're going to give the recommendations, but are you going to come back to us and say, hey, once we did the work, once we did our budgetary, it looks like we may not be doing this. Like, is this going to be brought back yeah. with updates since we're not having that piece now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. <sighs> item number two. Why don't I just go through the item? I'll just say item number one, two, blah, 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 blah. And then commissioners, you can chime in if you have something that you highlighted or want to change. Okay. All right. Moving on to our goal number two. Okay. Does anybody have any? This Lighter. There's um, for Terry's attention um, typo of the, of the, on item number two. Says another, it repeats it. Of the, of the awareness of the, of the. So just a, delete one of the of these. I, if I can make a recommendation as we go through this, we'll say if it's completed and then whether or not the commission can decide on if they want to add it to next year and keep it going. So that way we're, we're, we're hitting it all on one fell swoop okay. going through and then we'll know if there's anything we need to take away. And then at the end, we can say, okay, now is there anything new we want to add? First one. Uh, that will probably stay April, 2025. Okay, so item number two, did, did, did the grammar thing. Okay, our priority rankings high, keep it the same. Keep the timeline same. for completion is ongoing. No changes. Um, so for this one, because uh, the city social media tabling at events and collaborations, are we wanting to keep that? Uh, because I know city council approved a, a new contract with um, communications as far as our website. Um, do we want to add that to work in collaboration with that third party to maybe? I would say just work with the city clerk's office because they're the ones who's managing that. Oh, okay. So then I would update that to include the city clerk's office. Um, that's my only part. We'll just add it in there. Terry, I'll take care of it. Well, I'll tell you where to put it. Okay. So item number three, seat grant funds. I <laughs> and on, ongoing. Okay. Okay, I, item number. I'm sorry. Can I add to that um, community foundation, uh, which is the fiduciary, yeah. okay, a funder, um, and that's my recommendation. Or item grants. number three, yes. the Monterey Community Foundation. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Did you get that, Terry? Hey. <laughs> and that's high and ongoing. Okay. Okay. Item number four, high and ongoing. What changes? This commissioner Bobo. I I know that we for the proposed activities, do we want to put a number like our goal be that we at least elaborate with three a year or maybe one a year so that we have, you know, some goals to meet because um well, we don't I, all participate in work leaders sometimes, or we're not. No, able. that's true. But we do collaborate with FOSPA and we collaborate with the Neighborhood Improvement Commission extensively. We really do. Okay. So perhaps this is not an ongoing thing because we just established um, the collaboration with NIC for the um, Christmas lights. So that, that's an ongoing. Well, we've done more than just that. 
that was oh, no, one thing. No, I'm just saying that then if we met this goal, should we take it off? And no, it should be ongoing all all the time. Never stop. Yeah. Yeah. I think what they're saying is just having it as a constant work plan objective that we are always going to do this. So we can always go back and say, hey, we're going to, you know, if it's I'm not saying the commission is going to do it, but let's just say we get 10 new commissioners and next thing it's like, well, I didn't know we needed to collaborate with everyone because it's not on the work plan. It's more of a guiding document so we can go back to. Okay, the next item is uh, number five, attend workshops. I think we need to increase the priority ranking to high instead of just medium. Because whenever there are workshops available, we should attend them. I, I agree. And one thing that I will say about this is it's actually really exciting. Um, and I'm going to see how I can get all of you involved is that through um, the California Parks and Recreation Society, which I'm a member and I'm on um, the board of the administrator section, is that we have, there's multiple sections throughout the society with there's a rec section, there's administrative section, there's an educator section, there's um, therapeutic recreation, there's development and operations. And now they're starting one that's gonna be more advocacy that's focused on commissioners and elected officials. So that would be a section that I would like to get the commissioners and even our city council to become a part of. And then they, in theory, would be able to go and attend the annual conference or other um, educational sessions that pop up throughout the year. And there'll be things that are focused specifically on the roles of commissioners, elected officials, as it uh, relates to parks and recreation. So I'm gonna, once this thing is just getting off the ground, like this year, they're just like launching it through the society, but I wanna make sure that I continue to share that information with the commission um, and get have you become members you know, over the next couple of years, for sure. So that's something where I think when we're looking at the workshops, you know, I'm going to do my best to, you know, seek them out and find them for you. But it's also would be helpful if you come up across something, right, whether it's through the California League of Cities or, you know, um, there's other avenues where there's workshops where you may find beneficial to your role as a commissioner. Let me know and, and we'll figure out how we can, you know, um, get you to attend because I think I, I'm not always looking out there and I don't always have the time to do it, but if, if it's brought to me, it's easier for me to say, yeah, Hey, I think that would be good in your role, you know, can help you, you know, with, with your position. Great. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Nelson. I agree that it should be a high priority. Thank you. Anyone else? No. Okay. Moving on to the next slide. Uh, number six. This is another one I think that's going to need to um, just be included, but like I said, with the budget. Right, and then change the uh, the, the last part, the date. Mm -hmm. I would keep it March. 2025. I, I would put spring. Spring 25, because that, that would use a little bit more leeway depending on when we do the budget. Okay. Number next, uh, item seven. <clears throat> that's the trail system for the three parks. And that's ongoing. And that's ongoing. So we, we talked to earlier about Lincoln Cunningham. Um, we know that hopefully Havana Solis will be included um, so that is, you know, definitely something that while there's not a lot of work to be done now, I think it's more of the advocation for it once we get these projects up and going, you know, and, and coming and speaking on behalf of any funding potentials that are out there. Correct. Okay. Number next is number eight, which was reviewing the municipal code section 9.08. I think we did complete this one and it was established that the code would just stay as is for now. Right. So we could potentially remove this if the commission wants to for the next year. So we just omit that item. 
completed. Everyone is in agreement to omit that. Okay. Okay, very good. Okay. Um, item number 10. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to get done here. Oops. <laughs> I had it crossed out, but that was part of the other one. Okay, number nine, I'm sorry. Blues in the Park collaboration. I think we discussed this at a, at a previous meeting and we, we kind of have an idea, but I think it would be good just to keep it ongoing. Yeah. That's... Yeah, that was my question. I think that we should more <laughs> tailor that to like us being there to participate or table um, along with that participation portion of it. But I mean, because once we become part of uh, the ongoing conversation, like we still need a, a presence there. So sure. does the park and rec have a table already that's set up there? Perhaps we can. We do have a table, but we use it for a multitude of things it's first aid and a variety of other things so but we could have a an offset and just include the commission there next to us too we've done that in the past not this last year but in past years we have well, I, commissioner walton i think you need to be more specific about collaboration like are you looking to participate in selection of the bands? Are you looking to have activities? What do you mean by collaboration? What do I mean by it? I'm Not just sure. reading what it says. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what do we mean by collaboration? <laughs> I, think, I think if we go the route of maybe adding activities, having like a specific activity that the commission provides whether it's one of the five weeks something that we can kind of you know put our hat on like hey this is how we're going to have a presence at the, the event i think that would be a good you know you know selling point right it's not you're not committing to five weeks you would can be committing to one week and maybe that's the week you know you hold a cornhole tournament or something that's going on in conjunction with the concert so that there's some other piece there that the commission is responsible for. So, I have a question. How are they, uh, how is the entertainment um, selected by DV, uh, what do you call it? D, D, the music, CDs or? Uh, I have somebody that helps me um, that has a long standing history with the event and I get, first-hand knowledge of some top acts that would like to participate, and then I work with their band managers. Commissioner Lovell. Within the budget, and that's that's the hardest part, right? Because we have a very limited budget for five weeks um, of the concert series, and finding quality acts that are right around $2,500 to $3,500 is very, very difficult, especially now. Um, we kind of discussed this before on the selection of music and we, we talked about uh, cultivating the performances that we do have because of those tight relationships and because it is within our budget. Um, and there's some fan favorites in, in the, that lineup, but also opening it up to local um, artists. artists that we talked about. Um, and I know you had recommended us either sending you who those local art artists are. Um, but that was a way did we decide on that or like how we were going to do that because i know it's like well, right now all the, the opening acts are all local so we we try and prioritize the low the opening acts as the local bands and then the headliners right we want to get some draw because we know blues in the park while it's a a city based thing there are people that come from all over you know the state for our shows especially when we get some of those top headliners like you know this year we have big brother in the holding company. 
uh, like that is a, a big bill there. And we'll get people on that name alone that will come from all over the state for a free concert. So like, we really want to make sure that we can still have a quality show with some really top headliners, but then mix in that local flair in there too, to open for them. I think, I think we'll, we just, we can tailor the wording for like, like we discussed on, you know, participate in a, a series, one activity during the series or something, or, or let me think about it and I'll bring it back. Uh, uh, we'll teach salsa lessons. The crowds, the crowds speak for itself. For, for the talent that you bring, be successful. That's all I have to ask. Okay. Yes. Ongoing. 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 <clears throat> okay, where are we at? Uh, number 10. Institute Adopt a Park Program. This is. <laughs> That's it's like it, it's done. Okay. I just need to get final approval from the city attorney and then bring it to the city council. That is on my long list to to do with the commission, but it, I would say that it's complete to the extent of now we're just needing final approvals and, and bringing it there. And I think there's just been a lot of things going on where it's been put on the back burner. Well, our priority said low anyway, so I would whatever, just put it as partially complete. There are parts of it. Yeah, you? yeah. The commission, the commission's job with it is complete. Now it's in staff's hands. Yeah, because we had it on a previous agenda to talk about it. Yeah, and we, we yeah we finalized everything. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. And I'll move it to the other. Thank you. Okay. Uh, number 11. Work with the Environmental Commission for Tree Plantings. But uh, I would like to add on to that uh, also Public Works and FOSPA into that equation. Um, um, Commissioner Lobo. I just have some concerns because we don't have an active environmental commission. So is there a way that we can get some contact information on those that are still active? I know that when we did have that combined commission meeting, it was like two or three. I think there's three people on it right now. Yeah, yeah. and so maybe getting some contact information so that we can begin those discussions um, with regards to this. Um, and I like adding public works and FOSPA. And, FOSPA. And, and I will say that I think that this is going to end up being, I mean, obviously we, we have it as ongoing, but right now we're working on getting the trees so they can be planted. I know, um, didn't you see the email from, from Dave? So I think it's, it's in process somewhere once we identify the locations. Commissioner Nielsen. I this is mostly uh, supported by FOSPA. I can't go out and plant 15 trees in the city. Apparently uh, wanted to have locations of where the trees would be. And as it's turning out, it's too difficult for FOSPA or me myself to go out and find locations and send all that information so then the public works department can come and look at those locations to see if that's an okay place to plant a tree. It's become so labor intensive and scattered out that I don't think it's happening. When you would normally pick a location for a tree, would you just get the tree and then just pop it in the ground the day of on whatever spot or are you identifying a location ahead of time? Well, the first time, See, I guess we've only done it once, right? Uh, we did identify that, but 
things have changed in some ways with the person that I worked with in FOSPA to do that. And um, it's, it's too difficult to figure all that out. Then it's turning into summertime and they don't want to plant any trees in the summertime. So um, I personally am not working on this at this time. So I don't know who, you know, the city staff wanted to work on it and figure out where the trees should be planted. They can, but FOSPA is not really interested. I mean, they want trees, but they, they don't have the time right now to go out and figure all that out. Before, yes, we did send, but we only had like 15 to 30 places to put trees. I, don't, I think we made plans for like 15. But we had more leeway before, and it's honestly the negativity. I felt like it was a negative. We just can't go out and plop trees in the ground. I mean, I, I just don't feel like there's cooperation in a way that feels like, yeah, it's great you're doing that. And it's demotivating. So, Commissioner White? Is, so there isn't a committee or a group that goes out and makes these decisions? In the city? Yes. Up here, well, I, I know before, first time we did it, we went out and made the decisions and submitted them. What happened? And most of them were fine. I mean, we, yes, everything was okay. Okay. But it, the concern is that a tree is going to grow up and block someone's view. So there's that concern. Oh, so, um, so this group didn't have any guidelines for going to plant here or any other. They just went out and looked around. So to speak, the city didn't come out and say you could plant trees in this area, you could plant trees in that area. No. Okay. That's what I was getting at. Right. Okay. Yeah. Commissioner Lobo. Um so the the first year that we did it, it was just a volunteer group that um that picked the locations pretty much. Um, and had to submit it to city. So are we looking for more of uh, public works to take more of a lead to say, um, these are the guidelines uh, to work around and then actually have someone from public works allocated to go look at those areas where we can plant and then uh, maybe have a FOSA representative say, yeah, that can work. Like it, it to distribute the labor across the board is what we're asking. Did I understand that right? Like for this particular goal, um, if we're going to involve the Environmental Commission, Public Works, and FAFSA to work collaboratively when, when it comes to the lab, labor intense portion of it, there should be one representative from each one of those that is doing something. Is that what I understand? Just so that we can get some clarification how to... More or less, that. yes. Okay. So... Um, in theory, we should have public works, one of our commissioners, FAFSA, and whatever other person, maybe Dan. So four people handling the tree planning project. Is that? I, I don't really know because the first time it was more just FOSPA. I helped a lot and now it's it's it feels like there are too many uh, steps that they need to take and it, they're being taken too late and we're getting to the point where 
um, FOSPA is focused on other things at the moment. And I, every tree needs to have a steward and that's why most of them were planted in FOSPA parks. We could, you could change that and put it on the website or social media that if you want to, if you want to uh, steward a tree in a park, people can volunteer to do that. So the labor that we had for the first year um, with the stewards, that may not be available to us because there's no set timeline in order to meet um, the need that FOSA provides for the trees and also meet the need to plant the 15 trees. Did I understand that? Because of the timeline? So like if you guys do the recommendation and say, hey, we want to plant these, you're having a lot of pushback. Like we still have to go through this process, this process, and the next process. Well, the majority went in 12 parks, one which was an impossible park. And it was pretty well coordinated at that first planting. And then It was difficult, there was difficulty with NIC and getting all that straightened out that yes, there was money for trees in the parks for people who could steward them, not just the tree giveaway. So that was a delay. And so as time went on and we passed the, getting to pass the rainy season, I the only thing I could do is, or staff could talk to FOSPA and ask if they are still interested in planting and stewarding some trees. We, I didn't go to a formal meeting with FOSPA. Mm -hmm. I talked to the leaders and it was like, yeah, let's forget it. Maybe, maybe this tree program can be promoted for next year now. And like during the Blues in the Park time, promote that and get people interested in they want a tree or whatever and, and plan ahead for the next year so we can have it all in line for the rainy season. Well, what it comes down to is getting the said right here, work with Environmental Commission for tree planting. Do they have the final say-so? Somebody has to have the final say-so. Originally, yes or no, or set guidelines. Yeah, the Environmental Commission really wasn't involved, other than some people were involved in FOSPA and the Environmental Commission. And the Environmental Commission is not happening. And some of those, you know, it just there's not really a connection now. With. Okay, that's my point. But I, I think ultimately it is the public works, the city public works that decides where trees go, like in parks and what have you. So sure. okay. So these are two different programs. This is the program that we talked about that there were some issues about where these 15 trees were going to be planted around the community. Um and we did it the first year and we had FOSTA Stewart the first year, but talking about the second year, which is right now, the current year, there, because there's no like lead, there was no really communication about timing, um, when FOSA was available, perhaps the city wasn't. Um, so maybe if we leave this on the word plan, uh, talk about ironing those things out, perhaps we could still do it. Definitely, this, yeah. Perhaps we could still do it this year, but if not this year, maybe we can incorporate like uh, Commissioner Maxwell recommended we can incorporate this particular one into Blues um, blues in the Park, where we ask, you know, uh, folks that live near the parks if they would be interested in volunteering to steward a tree in that in that park. Mm -hmm. um, but that's something that we can iron out, like, it's, so that we don't have this conversation and have 
two separate tree programs kind of lumped into one. Because right. I think some folks are thinking about the free tree giveaway, which they can plant wherever they want on their property versus the 15 trees that are allocated for the city of Seaside so that we are still continuing to be a tree city. Um, you, you know, and the big piece for that is just identifying potential locations and then vetting those locations to make sure that trees are okay to be planted there that aren't going to bring up sidewalks, right. view shed obstructions and, and things like that. Because I think I mentioned the last time we talked about it, some trees went in, I think it may have even been Fernando where someone complained about the tree now blocking their view. So like, and this is one where the trees are just being planted without doing the, the, the bedding process. So we just need to do better, especially when we're talking about 15 or upwards trees that we are just really looking into that piece. And that's something we didn't do the first time, but now as we're expanding and we're trying to do more trees, it's just, it, we have to just do our due diligence. May I just say that um, I could go to the FOSPA in the next FOSPA meeting and at our next meeting, I would know if this is really just some, if it's something they want to collaborate on still this year. Yeah, because we have those funds. Right. So are there um, $4,500? Yeah. Yeah. Commissioner Lowell. Um, because we are adding FOSPA to this, did we want to wait until? Commissioner Nielsen asked if they still want to be a part of that collaboration. Um, because if not, if FOSTA doesn't, then this kind of changes. I mean, the goal doesn't change, but who we're working with and how we're going to navigate that nuance of picking a location and vetting that location and perhaps Public Works needs time to maybe give us a map of, to saying, hey, this looks like it's a good location. Maybe these are the areas that that we recommend you choose from. But if we don't have that collaboration and we add them. I, I think that they just change the goal and make the goal a little bit more vague. And it could just be more of work with um, potential nonprofits and city commissions and staff on this project. And then we're identifying. So you're leaving it more vague there. And then we can work with whoever wants to. Because next thing you know, NIC might want to be a part of it too, right? Because now they're helping just give us the money. Right, we have the money for the trees because of them. It's neighborhood improvement. Maybe they want to, you know, jump in with that. So it, it, there could be a variety of commissions that could help with this. So or or staff and and add in the uh, volunteer tree stewards. Yeah. I mean, because anybody can put them. You know, anybody can steward a, a tree in the park. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Okay. Okay, number 12, implement a water safety program for local youth. This is ongoing. We'll be doing our annual uh, Seaside's Largest Swim Lesson in June. This is something that we'll, I think we'll be on like our third or fourth year doing it. So, um, we'll just say ongoing. Oh, uh, yeah, because it's, you know, now it's like an ongoing thing, but really we we need help with getting more qualified swim instructors. That's the challenge. We have a lot of kids in this community that need to learn how to swim. We don't have a lot of people in this community that can help teach them how to swim. So that's one thing that we're building on. We have a lot of adults that need to learn how to swim too. So it's very imperative. <laughs> um, and the test is not easy. So um, we have a great junior program. So I know that we've gotten some some good candidates from there, but um, I'd really like us to have more of a targeted plan on how we can deal with that because I'm one of those active persons that go swimming with my children and, and I'm there and, you know, I'm one of those adults that need to learn how to swim properly too. Um, but it sucks when we don't have the staff. I think the adult lessons still run pretty frequently. So you're free to join those ones. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'd really like to kind of nail down on this, this one so that we can maybe help with that, um, getting lifeguards here. I know we service a lot of swim teams, 
um, perhaps maybe when they're it's home for the summer? It's then it's just a different world right now. And, you know, we get guards, they come in and they say they have open availability. And then as soon as they start working, oh, by the way, I have this, 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 and this, and I'm not available. Right. And we need them, you know, we need them to guard the pool, but then the, the goal is to transition them into teaching swim lessons and become WSI, right? We've probably cut the amount of classes we have and the number of kids we can allow in our classes substantially since the since we've come back from the pandemic. And we just haven't been able to get them here. Um, and I know that isn't this isn't a seaside problem. This is a nationwide problem. And we are just not as fortunate as other cities that have more of a pool of people that they can pull from, right? We, we just, we're not, we don't have a lot of population here. Whereas if we were in San Jose in that area, there, there's more people to pull from where you can kind of make do. So that's kind of what our challenge is. And I'll say Monterey is struggling with it. Um, any place that really is operating a pool right now is hopefully we get our guards to come home from the summer and we'll, we'll be able to kind of ramp it up a little bit, but we have hired a few new ones um, over the past couple of weeks. So that's a step in the right direction. Now we just got to hopefully keep them and then get them trained into being some instructors. And I know our governor didn't do us any favors by increasing the minimum wage for uh, fast food workers statewide. That's um, correct, because now you make more at McDonald's than you do as a lifeguard. Exactly. And you know what? Lifeguards are a first responder type person. That's correct. And in most, and not most, but there are plenty of agencies where lifeguards fall under firefighter and the fire department. Well, maybe that's what we need to advocate for the status of their uh what do you call it? Their name or whatever. Maybe their we need job to... title. Maybe we... as a first responder position. Raise the what are you talking about? I've already raised it multiple times. So like I mean, I gotta do it again. We we paid the most on the peninsula for lifeguards. Like we were able to get seaside the highest paid, and yet now we're still falling below. So uh, you know, all for that. But yeah, we can have this being ongoing and, and figure out strategies to increase um, our lessons could be, yeah. you know, uh, a good goal there. Okay, anything else on this? Okay. Okay, item number next is the ADA playground equipment, which means all inclusive. And we really need to advocate for that because I know the last few Ribbon cuttings that we've had did not have the ADA uh, equipment. So that's ongoing and high. So we just need to keep pushing for that. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, could you please clarify what you mean by didn't have the ADA equipment? Because I've seen, well, I'm not sure what you're referring to. Okay, at Highland Otis, for one thing, on the latest ribbon cutting thing that we had there, it, there's not even ADA accessibility for that lower portion. There's not. And the, my understanding, the reason for that is, is because the upper half of the park is accessible. And it's one park. So because it's two, it's not two different parks, the ADA at the top sufficed Right. For that, that right. I mean, you know, I'm not bashing that part of it, but that one, I know, doesn't even have accessibility. And they have to jump over a wall to get there. It's not your fault. I'm not saying, <laughs> I'm not bashing. I'm just making a comment, you know. <laughs> Okay, but we really do need to, uh, in the future, uh, promote that. Okay, any else? No, okay. Uh, irrigation for parks, number 14. 
Is this medium and ongoing? I think that goes back to um, what uh, Ms. Reese was saying about the the water tanks above ground uh, or below ground or whatnot. So, however, the commission can help advocate for FOSPA to you know increase their on-site water capacity or however that would work. That, that could be something I think you discuss if we're looking at, you know, the budget and things like that, advocating just for money towards FOSPA for those parks. All right, Commissioner Lobo. Um, for this one, uh, just to go back with the underground and above ground water tanks, um, if we can put this as high ongoing, um, and then take in FOSA's recommendations for us to begin talks about when NIC brings down that allocation of money, uh, have that be one of our recommendations. I know we struggled last year a little bit about what we wanted to do and how we wanted to kind of tailor what we were gonna ask, but uh, prioritize that because water is such a need um, and we're gonna be renovating and doing so much work throughout the parks. Um, if we could start thinking about some of these costs being taken up by the NIC in the future would be really nice. So I'd like to- Good point. Yeah. I, yes. I agree. Does everyone else agree? Yeah. Very good. Okay, moving on to number 15 which is community garden, it says, but I think we need to put gardens because there's one at Capra and also Havana Solis. And I think we need to change that to high and ongoing, so. Is there more of a, um, a focus that the commission want, would want to do with these gardens? Because right now, I mean, the way it's just the work on the garden. And we know that one of our commissioners is one of the, the garden stewards over there. Um, but so we know that he is going to be taking probably the load of this this task. But what else is there that? Uh, perhaps we can start utilizing some of our budgetary items to try to um provide equipment or things that some of these gardens may need. Maybe we can provide some seeds for gardens. I know Miss Jeannie always is looking for new plants at Havana. Um, something like that's monetary, that's available that they, they may not have. Maybe additional gloves for work days uh, that can be kept in the shed. Um, yeah. Could be more of support ongoing community garden stewards and um, activities. Anything else? Okay. Uh, number 16 is the Wheeler Street tennis courts and pickleball. Well, this will be getting taken care of of every item except for the porta potty uh, by the end of the fiscal year. And I think that then we could, we could probably just take this one off because it will be theoretically completed. And at this point, I don't think a porta potty will be up there because of the concerns of the residents. Okay. So we can move that to complete for our next uh, year thing. <clears throat> okay, moving on to then. But you can just put completion date expected in, you know, June of 2024. So that way we have another ribbon cutting. Yeah. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> okay. Moving on to the next item. Uh, number 17. Youth involvement in parks, high and ongoing. I would say, I would go ahead, Commissioner Lobo. 
Uh, I really want to keep this on. I know that we attempted to try to like bring back the youth commission. Um, and my nonprofit now is actively in schools that have a little over 50 kids that are interested in the youth commission. So perhaps this could be an introduction to that. And uh, we are planning to come to City Hall and ask for that commission to be reinstated. Um, and I'm hoping that this commission can, you know, rally behind that and make that uh, recommendation as well. But um, youth involvement, maybe individually, or if we know other nonprofits that can maybe bring kids to one commission meeting and maybe one of the FOSTA um, uh, parks that we steward, like uh, Commissioner Daniel can perhaps take lead or, or collaborate where we can start bringing, you know, even kids at the, the youth center, um, just to start having them have this in their face and know about it and know what we do. Um, Cause I don't think we really did much last year with, with this. Um, I could be wrong, um, but I'd like to have a little bit more. We have great partners like the village and other like CPY. Maybe it could be like a field trip or like an incentive to come out um, and talk about that. And so I'm not particularly show, sure how we can navigate through that, but those are some ideas that we can begin to introduce our commission out to the public in a more intentional way. And I'll, I'll say too, that I had a, a meeting, two meetings actually with um, council member Garcia Arizola. We, we went out to Bayview Academy and talk to the kids there and they're really interested in parks. Um, they're asking a lot of questions about our parks and a lot of those kids live here in Seaside. So they're very, they're involved. Um, they came to city hall here and, and got a presentation from the fire department, police department, stuff like that. But then they asked me some questions, you know, what we're doing as well. So I invited them to commission meetings and whatnot. So there are kids out there who are interested and, um, I, I do see this as something that will probably see more youth involved over the, the coming years. Commissioner White. This is one of the most important items on this agenda to get these young kids involved and let them know that these are your parks. And once they get that in their mind, they will get a real interest in wanting to take care of them. And, and, and advance them. So whatever we can do with this uh, item, it would be helpful. And we also heard in uh, FOSPA's uh, report by Ms. Reese that they have youth uh, working with them in some of the parks. Any, anyone else? Okay, so our thing is high and ongoing. Good. Okay, number 18 is improve the sand volleyball court at Highland Otis Park. And Carol Mickelson was supposed to look into getting a donation from Granite Rock or something, right? That is true. She is. Originally, we, uh, city, um, Public Works Department, Carol talked to the Public Works Department and they indicated that this was an easy thing and they would just take care of it. But from there, it's, you know, that was well over six months ago and now it's kind of become different. Nobody knows who's supposed to do it. And she is supposed to ask for the sand from Granite Rock, but I don't know what conversation she's had regarding the, um, the border that's going to be built around it and how all that would work. So I, I really don't understand why this hasn't happened. And, uh, where it is. I know it sounds pretty, <laughs> I mean, pretty I, negative about public works, but no. it just feels 
I just feel like it got lost, sort of like the this tree project got lost. And uh because we did have this discussion. Yeah. We did. No, no, and, and I was wondering at the presentation that Ms. Reese was talking about, she taught I my understanding is that it seemed like they had someone that was providing the sand and the borders and it was getting taken care of through FOSFA. That was just the recommendation. And I know we've looked at it and I don't know where it is on the project list. So we can look at, I would recommend adding this and we can look at the cost and adding that to next year's budget. We can't add it to mid year at this point, but. Well, it was going to be added. It was a, an item that was gonna be asked of the NIC, but when there was communication with public works they indicated that's not a big deal we'll take care of it and then now i don't know where it is commissioner Lowell. i recall the conversation with miss carolyn burke and us looking into it. um fossa did say on their presentation that it's funded uh the that is funded by the city and FOSA for the volleyball court with new curb and sand replaced. Um, so I'm wondering if the conversation was around like how that would look and how much uh, city works is gonna put in. Um, but I guess that, I guess my question is, is is FAFSA providing some funds and then the city providing the other funds or was FAFSA just the 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 in-between person beginning to have these conversation with Ms. Carolyn Burke and that's when we got the update with her saying that this could potentially be easy fix she would need to go back to public works to find that out and then we we didn't have that come back so right so right. I think that's where it stands now and then obviously with Ms. Burke leaving the city then uh, through a whole nother Thing is, more than that, got all of the, that was her project. So, can I ask this question of Commissioner Nielsen? When you go to FOSBA, the meeting about the trees, could you inquire about this sand issue? Yes, also, I will. Thank you. Thank you. We'll, we'll work with, I'll work with Public Works and see if we can get added to the next budget, too, just in case. Yeah. And I think one thing we need to lo really look at, and I'm just going to put my two cents in here, is we're talking about the sand and obviously the barrier. Right. However, I also do believe that if you're going to have a volleyball court on that hill, you need some sort of barrier that keeps that ball from going down into the street. It takes one spike, miss hit, and that ball is way down the hill. Okay. Steps in. It's, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> we got to look out for children's safety if they're playing, right? We don't want them running in the street chasing after a ball. So that would be one thing that I think really needs to be looked at when we're talking about redoing this volleyball court. Well, originally we talked about having a fence and our – plan way back I don't even know when that was it was a long time ago and I think there's some bushes that have been planted along uh that's a bingo right yeah okay some concerns so thank you for looking into that for us okay so ongoing projects. So we're looking at this one, the Manzanine Stewart Park. I think, you know, we don't have a grant right now. So this one's kind of on hold, but that's part of the um the 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 uh blue zones um uh, marquee project, the trail network. Right. So I think we just need to change it because we don't have a grant. We're not because this was before when we I applied for a grant. For that park and we needed to get community input so i think now we should probably change this to manzanita stewart lincoln cunningham 
in Havana Solis Trail Project. And then there, the activities would be can continue to seek input, advocate for budget funds and things like that, because that should be an ongoing project of the commission. Okay. I would add, add Lincoln Cunningham and Van Solis. Trail project. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, the next item is the recreation and park facilities. Yeah, that's always ongoing. We need more facilities, I mean, <laughs> for sure. We do. We need a gym, to be honest. Um, I do want to maybe tailor this a little bit to um, maybe in the coming year, also focus on what that may look like, um, an actual facility, a new facility. I think this commission can do that and start looking at some innovative ways around Seaside, um, specifically because if we're promoting our activities and we reach capacity, say all of a sudden in the last, in the next six months, we start reaching capacity at all of these locations. Um, what is our next recourse? We, we continue to talk about in our master plans that we need a new facilities, but actively looking at that as a commission, I think we should add it. Um, I, I would recommend bringing it up, but I mean, as an ongoing project, maybe uh, it be more of a high level so that we can start talking about what that looks like. Um, if we did have an influx of that, um, we're, we are growing and you know, we have people coming in with a lot of families. And so a fixed facility building, I, I I think we're there. We're there to start even looking at what that may look like here locally, maybe some tangible solutions now. I know that um, the Salvation Army um, has that building that perhaps we can start utilizing in collaboration to expand some facility locations. So that's my recommendation on that one. Okay, anything else on this? That was good. Okay, promote recreation and park activities. Anyone have anything to add to that? The blues in the park, youth and adult and older adult activities. I do know that we need more staff in order to put some of these activities on. You know, we can promote them, promote them, promote them, but I mean, Dan has got his hands tied with uh, the budget and also the amount of staff and the number of hours that they can work. So we need to have more staff and more money for the budget. Yeah, there's only volunteers are well received, much needed. Okay. Oh, oh I just else. wanted to put uh, my one cent in of having older adult or people, you know, not, not just youth equipment, but some older adult pieces of equipment that they could uh, exercise with. And I that may be in the master plan, but I think more of that could be used. And one of the big things was the trail from Havana Solis all the way over to Manzanita Stewart Park, which I thought that was a project that was already in the works and that we had money to start building that trail. Am I correct? Okay, so we are gonna have a new trail in Lincoln Cunningham. So it would be a good place to include some phys physical workout equipment for older adults, whether that's you know, benches so they can do bench presses or uh, stretches or step ups or different things that they could perform 
in the parks because most everything is for kids. So I think that's very important. And uh, yeah, park activities, things like on a weekend, uh, a group maybe comes to a park and has an activity like Palenque Arts or something. So it brings people to the park. That's the only input I have for that. There's a really good exercise class, modern exercise class. No, there is. I attend that regularly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's really good. Well, it's easier to move. I mean, it's, you know, it takes the weight off of your feet and plate. It's good there. It's good. Mm -hmm. I can run through the wall. For the promotion of recreation and park activities, um, perhaps our commission can put on something yearly. Like that's just us, whatever we decide to do. Um, I think that would be nice. Again, just awareness, let people know that we are that you know, parks commission. Perhaps we can do something like um, Commissioner Chris uh, was trying to collaborate with MC, um, the soccer club. Perhaps we can, you know, our commission could put on something at one of their games or something like that, but just a yearly commitment that we decide to put on, whatever that may be, like, you know, a continuation of yearly. That sounds like a great idea to add to the work plan when we get to new contracts. <laughs> oh, we've got a lot of work to do still. Wow. Okay. Um, did you have something? Okay. All right. Moving on. Um, I think that this next one just remove Ellis. Is Ellis is done? Oh. Do you give? I mean, the other one can stay. So still keep it in there. Correct. Okay. Work collectively with the environmental commission, which is only three people now. We can probably combine this and just have work collectively with other city commissions. Okay. Okay. So that's both the last two items together. Yeah, and then we bump in and I see. Okay. On to the next page. Potential future projects. So we have all those, and then the, the two thousand one that um, former commissioner Cato was working on. We can still have that on there. Uh, while we're preparing, we'll add ones that were completed to here. And then now would be what an opportunity for the team to maybe want to add here. Mm -hmm. In to this project. Yes. Okay, I, I would like to add uh, facilities, a new facility, a gym, well, how per se. I that mean, that that's a future project. Well, potential. I hope it's in my lifetime. Future projects of what? That would be review potential locations. Okay. For uh, indoor gym sure. facility. Sure. Uh, can we also get plans and locations for the Seaside East so that we can take a look at that? I don't think that's done. Okay. It's in the works, though, right? The There's been some some uh, workshops or whatever. So those, those were just, I mean, there's no drawings or anything. That was more mm. of a scheme. Like, like, right. There's no work done other than, like, hey, here are potential, like, this housing part, housing here, right? There was nothing, like, cemented on what that actually looked like. Right. So that was nineteen. Yes. I think so. Yeah, we've been needing it for a long time. But this right now is just potential future projects. Like this is going to come in the middle of looking like we need it since I was young. I think this is something that we do want to look at um, to add to the twenty four twenty five 
right? Because we're we are we've ended 23, 24. We're looking at what we're carrying over from that work plan. And then this will be what we want to add to that work plan. Um, so I think facilities is a is a priority to add to 24, 25 work year. So it would look like maybe beginning those discussions and what that looks like currently, um, and then figuring out what's that long-term goal, right? Like, are, are we planning to make sure that we, this is a highlight in 10 years because we know that there's property coming down the pipeline and stuff like that, but to have those discussions and perhaps understand what costs would be and then, you know, inflation and, and then at least we have a starting point. We need to dream big. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyone else? Any other ideas? That's a big idea. I, I think hi has been hi for a long time since before I had gray hair. Yeah. Yeah. But then my grandson's going to keep on turning the bridge. Right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next item: prior year's accomplishments. Or, so we don't need to go We don't. Is there, okay. any, is there any other items the commission want to add to the uh, Commissioner Nielsen. I see here that um, the seeking grant funds. I is it in the ongoing? Yeah. It is. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah, that's one of the main first ones. Sure I, I would like to recommend us adding a yearly Parks and Recs day of celebration. So perhaps like an activities day that we put on. I know when I was younger and my dad worked, um, he used to drive that little um, rainbow bus and he would take us to each park and we would get to play at each park. And so maybe something like that would be nice. I know it was like the highlight of my day. I Okay. Should we have it during the blues in the park then? <laughs> I mean, that could be something that you do, right? And yeah. probably it could be focused there on one of those July days where the Parks and Rec Commission is doing family friendly day or right. family fun day at Blues and Park. You got to get up there and dance. Or, uh, we get up there and dance or see. Yeah. So, like, we could do like something where we're tying in something else, right? Like, Good idea. So, would this be considered a special event that we can um, utilize to do a fireworks show if we decide to do it on July 4th? No, because you're really trying to make my job hard, aren't you? <laughs> um, we don't have a location for fireworks in the city anymore. There's nothing that we can do. And not to mention, you would, we, I would have, if we were to do fireworks, I would have already had to have ordered the fireworks a few months ago. So um, that is our challenge now because we lost the golf course for a fireworks show. Okay. So are we done with this? Or do we need to do public comment? That's true. Do we have public comment? Uh, any public oh, comment? I thought I heard someone. Oh, okay. Public comment is closed. Okay, very good work. Um, one recommendation yes, sir. is that with when we get, when we get the work plan, I think it it really would make a lot of sense for the commission when we start thinking about 
upcoming meetings and things like that to reference the work plan when we're setting agenda items, right? Because this is what we should be focusing on for the year and trying to stay away from other items that get popped on there. And then that could keep our focus moving straight um, and really making sure that we can complete these. So good point. Thank you for your guidance. Okay, reports from recreation staff. Um, where are we? Meeting in March. We we have the dance coming up on Thursday. If anyone wants to volunteer, <laughs> it is uh, a hop. spring fling sock hop. So that that should be a jolly good time. Um, if you haven't seen, we we had our golden egg hunt um, a couple weeks ago, which was a pretty big. It was a pretty big turnout, even though we, you know, it started raining at the very last 10 minutes. So we got lucky there. Um, I won't steal the thunder of parks and all the fun or what they've been doing. Um, our new activity guide is out on the street. Um, it's on the website. And then you can pick up a hard copy at Olimar Center if you'd like. Registration for residents is May 13th. Non-residents is May 15th. Um, we have a couple of new things in there. I did partner with Monterey Bay FC. They'll be running a soccer camp this summer, um, which is, you know, really excited to get them involved. Um, we have some promotions where they'll be giving some discounted tickets um, for older adults for a game in September. We have we had one just recently where all the Powell basketball parent families could get a kid's ticket um, for five dollars for the game they just had last weekend. I'm not sure how many people um, participated in that, but we are kind of building our promotion with Monterey Bay FC. And really, we're just gearing up for summertime. Um, we have we talk about blues in the park. We have um, Fourth of July coming up. Cool thing about Fourth of July this year, I'll just put it out there, is since it's on a Thursday, which is the same day as the farmers market. We are looking at, at combining with the farmer's market during 4th of July. They may change their hours a little bit. So they'll, they'll be open during our whole event that we have. So um, that should be a good little, you know, twist there um, to get all the people that come, you know, get some fruit, fruits and veggies. Other than that, um, that's pretty much all I have. We do have a new um, sports coordinator. Um, her name is Sarah Cotham. Um, she comes to us. She worked for the city of Monterey's rec department for a while back in the day. Then she went to the corporate world and has come found her way back to rec. She jumped in and ran, uh, started the PAL soccer league, which started two weeks ago. We had to cancel this last week because of rain and weather and another circumstance that I'm sure you all heard about. I won't get into it, but we are doing good with soccer. So we did, we have about almost a hundred kids signed up, which is, which is pretty good for that. So we're, we were really excited to get that back off the ground. Um, and we have junior giants um, registration, which is open as well. So that's all my reports. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you for your report. Uh, reports from park staff. Is that me? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for waiting for us. Yes. Hi, Leslie Lantero with the Public Works Department. Um, so I have a, a few updates. So forgive me if you heard this before, but Highland Otis Park Playground Replacement Project was complete. We held the ribbon cutting um, March 30th at um, 9.30 um, in the morning. Um, and then Fernando Park, another park we completed and we had that ribbon cutting on March 13th, which was the Wednesday at 3.30 in the afternoon. Um, then we have uh, Lincoln Cunningham Arterial Trail. And um, I have here that we are working with the consultant on getting the 90% construction documents um, ready for bid. And we will anticipate awarding that contract in July. Um, Havana Solis improvements, which is my understanding, they are going to be, let me just grab my notes, removing some of the retaining structures, or not the retaining structures, some of the walls that are within the park, and putting in six picnic tables and three barbecue areas, one of which is going to be um, accessible. I guess I left it. Oh, there we go. Um, 
and they're going to be starting that um, and it'll be, be completed by the end of this fiscal year. Let's see, next we have uh, Kachino Park. Uh, we had our final walkthrough today with the contractor. He'll be completing the punch list items today and tomorrow. The fence should be coming down either today, um, either tomorrow or the following day. And you are all invited to the ribbon cutting this Saturday at 9.30. At Catino Park. Um, Sabato Park had its ribbon cutting um, over the weekend on Saturday in the rain. Even though it was in the rain, there was a large turnout and we had hot dogs. And um, I think Cal Am was promoting their, uh, uh, their program. They did supply us with some funds for that park. The Willer Tennis Court site is uh, on its way to be getting, uh, I think it's being restriped. This is something that Public Works is doing. And they are also going to be putting in a green screen um, out on the fence closest to Willer Street. Um, I think it's to, um, to block from the neighbors. Dual purpose, wind, wind and neighbors. <laughs> and it will help with the noise a little bit. Okay. And then we have, uh, that's it. That's all I have. Do you have Thank questions? You. I, I do have a couple of questions. Um, the tennis courts on Wheeler Street, they're not only getting striped, but they're also getting resurfaced, right? Yes. Oh, okay. It's a painted crack filled, right. not full resurfaced, but no. getting the crack filled and paint with, and then four pickleball courts. Okay, then I also have a question about uh, Catino Park. There's still an issue with the lights. They're, they're not working properly. Oh, you talking about the field lights? Yes. yes. Okay, that's different than the R. Okay, no, thing. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, it's okay. not to do with the new okay. ribbon cutting thing, but it's still that part. And last I heard, and I haven't confirmed this with Monty, um, when we had the contractor there to go onto the park to fix the lights, we couldn't fix one light because of the sprint um, communication that's on there and we needed them to turn it off so we can go up there and fix the light. And that's the only one I know of that we weren't able to replace. And if there's others, you um, let that's me know. That's not it. Okay. It's the one in the field where the whole tower is still down. Okay. I will find out. And it's my understanding that it is a an electrical wiring problem. Oh, okay. Well, there you but go. there's also that issue with the communications. I think that one's been taken care of, though. It's I, I, it's my understanding that the the left field pole has okay. no lights at all. Still, the left closest field. to the boys and girls club. Okay. okay. And then I know you um, still working on the. Uh, proposals for the murals we're presenting the mural at the city council meeting on the 18th selection is lanetta um is what we're recommending so it, have the history with them. right good. yeah okay thank you anyone else commissioner nielsen thank you I, my one question is about Wheeler Park. Yes. I mean, Wheeler Tennis Courts. Yes. Did you say they started? No. Oh, do you know? I just said that they're going to get it. They won't be starting until probably end of May. Okay. They're, so it should only take them a couple. Days. It's not going to take forever, or it won't take them that long. <laughs> um, they're just, well, they want to be absolutely sure about the weather and the rain. So even though like it's, you gotta go, we gotta go at least two weeks without rain for they can start because there's so much water like inside the cracks and they gotta make sure that all dries out. So if they get more rain, then- It's prolonged. Yeah. No one else, okay. Thank you so much for your presentation. And thank you for staying late with sure. us.
Oh, Commissioner Lobo. Uh, I had a question for recreation. Um, I understand that at one point we had a track team, a track club, um, and that is no longer happening. So I'd like to see how we can bring that back. Um, I don't know if it was ran through PAL. It was. It was run through PAL. And, oh, I, I am getting the, the nod that it was through the rec department, but that was well before my time. So I was not here to see it happen. Um, but I do know that we have been getting requests from Marina Powell to see if we were wanting to participate. We've pulled the kids and we just haven't gotten a lot of interest, but it's you know something we can look at. I'd like that because I am the coach for the Marina Powell and we have over 80 kids and 10 more. So we will have a total of 90 kids and a lot of them are from Seaside. So that was my recommendation. If we can somehow talk about that because... It's big. I'm sure it can, another new pallet program we can put it under. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Uh, reports from commissioners. Commissioner Walton. Um, I attended the Seaside Stars event as many of you did. And I subsequently heard nothing but positive things about how well run it was, um, the food, <laughs> just multiple good comments. So it's always good to hear when you do things right. And I've heard nothing but how well everything with Seaside Stars was. So commendation to Dan, his staff, and all the good work you did. And I managed to attend three ribbon cuttings, including the one on Wednesday at 3.30, and then the other two um, on Saturday, Fernando, Highland Otis, and Sabado Arts. And again, it's great to see. Um, I did Facebook posts about how wonderful it is to see um, the good work that's being done in Seaside and as Commissioner Nielsen mentioned earlier, the city council in attendance at all of those. And at the Fernando Park, which was on a Wednesday in the afternoon at 3.30, the police department, fire department, many city staff were there. I think we had more of them than we had community members. So that was also um, very positive. And again, kudos, that's it. Um, I had the honor to attend the Powell basketball banquet. Uh, my son has been playing for Powell since he was five. He's played up every year. And, and this was the first opportunity that I had to attend. Usually dad takes him and I never understood why. And, and I showed up and I was like, wow, now I know I, um, uh, it was amazing. It was so many kids, so many parents. Um, it was a great event. Uh, Commissioner Bobby was there as president, um, gave a, a speech. Uh, Council member uh, Pacheco acknowledged the Parks and Recs uh, department and us. So that was very kind. Um, so it was a great event. I Just one recommendation, maybe because um, NBC Suites is a great partner with us, I know that sometimes kids can get a little, um, you know, very energetic, especially when they're around their kids. I mean, around their friends. Um, so perhaps maybe having someone from city or maybe the board to kind of stand out in the lobby area. Cause I know that there's kids just like running around that whole area and it's, it's around their like beverage time, their adult beverage time. And they have, um, guests there and stuff like that and though there was no major thing but just to have those extra eyes parents sometimes have multiple kids and can't really keep the eyes but other than that I mean there was staff did a great job you know it was amazing that we have someone that sits on the board that works there that I know Serena for years I went to high school with her so just seeing her is great um and then I I have a track meet 
the kids have a track meet uh, this Saturday at Pacific Grove High School for their Pacific Grove Invitational. Um, it starts at 10 o'clock. If you all want to see our youth run out there, like I said, we got about 90 kids and um, our track meet or our track team has um, pretty much won all these uh, events the last couple of years. So um, that's my report. Thank you. Commissioner White. I attended two ribbon cuttings, the one at Fernando Park and the one at the Highland Otis Park. And I was impressed. It was great to see the finished product, how beautiful the park, the transformation, and the city staff that was attending, and the people that showed up, even the uh, even the locals, they were they were there, and they had their kids with them, and that's what it's all about. So it was great to see that. That was a good feeling. Get those ribbon cutting in those two parks. That's all. Commissioner, Vice Chair Nielsen. Thank you. I, why do I have Earth Day volunteers written here? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody want to help at Earth Day? <laughs> if anybody wants to help out at Earth Day on Sunday the 21st, uh, it starts at one and ends at four. If you have an hour or so, uh, we do have a uh, the subcommittee is volunteering, although one person will be out of town. So we could always use another pair of hands to do some of the things that we're going to be doing there. And um, it's it's fun. It's so fun. It goes so fast too. Pretty busy the whole time especially when you're having people fill out applications for trees and checking their residency and um, then giving them a voucher. And then we're gonna have uh, rock painting and then talk about the recreation department and uh, hopefully we'll have activity guides there. Or will we have activity guides there? You grab them, Okay, <laughs> we'll grab some. Yeah. And I've been to a couple of rib ribbon cuttings. It's so neat. Uh, um, like Commissioner White was saying, to see things spruced up. I mean, even if it's not a big thing that's been done, just seeing things spruced up is so much more inviting. And it it just is more welcoming and uh, it, just like painting, you know, the, the uh, like they were talking about painting a, a swing set or getting some nice sand in there. I mean, those aren't really big things, but it makes a difference. And uh, this past weekend when it was raining and we were, did the ribbon cutting at Sabato, I had my first hot dog in the rain and that was kind of fun. And uh, I think that's all I have to report. Thank you. Okay, my turn. Um, I attended a couple of ribbon cuttings. I, although I didn't uh, attend the one this last Saturday, I, I went by the park after it was over because I've been house sitting and animal sitting for friends. So I wasn't able to get away from that um, time. Um, we did have the Powell Banquet at the Embassy Suites for the basketball thing. And I was so proud of my oldest grandson. He got up and spoke uh, briefly uh, because he had started his basketball playing in the Powell program, and then he ended up, uh, well, their high school team won the Northern California State Championship this year. Uh, but I was proud of him for getting up there and, and speaking. That was a big step. Um, I thank the uh, engineering department and public works for all your hard work and appreciate all that you do. And um, Oh, I did attend uh, the Laguna Grande Regional 
Joint Powers Agency, not this last meeting last week, but the meeting last month. And that was a uh, really, really good meeting because uh, we're moving forward with the uh, trail uh, program or, or project, I should say. Our, our uh, commissioner, or I mean the chairperson is up there in the box. <laughs> Thank you for being our voice for our city. That's, that's uh, huge. It really is. Um, what else do I have? We have our soccer thing happening. Our junior giants thing will be happening soon. And we do have a meeting coming up and we can talk about the track program. So maybe in the future, just more stuff for people to do. And we need more staff. We need more staff, right? Okay, so if there's no other business, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>